Hi again, everyone. Gary Digital Williams here on Beltway Boxing News and Notes on the Boxing on the Beltway Podcast Network. And of course, you can always hear the Boxing on the Beltway Podcast Network on Spreaker.com. Let me hear that here live on Spreaker.com, as well as on iHeartRadio.com, TuneIn.com, and Stitcher.com. And in just a moment, I will give you a special offer that Stitcher fans can get involved with uh, in just a little bit. But we have a lot to get to this week because we have a lot of uh, events. Uh, we had a lot of events last week, and we have some recaps, some big wins for Beltway Boxers uh, this past weekend. And we have a lot of, a uh, lot more, I should say, of boxers that are taking that are competing coming up this weekend, uh, the 20th and the 21st. So a lot to get to right here on the Beltway Boxing uh, bo- boxing news and notes on the Box on Beltway Podcast Network, which is brought to you as always by Real Time Pain Relief from boxers to ballerinas for shoulder pain and muscle strain, everything in between. Boxing Along the Beltway recommends Real Time Pain Relief, the natural, plant based, safe, fast, and effective ointment. You go to freepainoffer.com, you buy $10 worth of Real Time Pain Relief, you get a free $10 tube of Real Time Pain Relief. Rub it on. The pain is gone in real time. And by DebraSpears.com. She has great weight loss tips, great jewelry, and great training methods as well on Debra. That's D-E-B-R-A Spears.com. If you'd like to be a sponsor right here at the Box on Boy Podcast Network, you can, of course, get to me on Twitter at Digital25. Or, excuse me, you can um, reach me on Hotmail and email at BeltwayBoxing.com. At hotmail.com. That's beltwayboxing hotmail.com. And also, um, email, uh, she say, uh, find me on Twitter at digital25. Now, before we get to all the information, we've got a special offer for listeners who, who find us on stitcher.com. Now, let me say before we get into it, though, that I have all four of the podcasts that are podcast hosts for the Boxing on Beltway Podcast Network on my my phone so i can listen to them at any time i listen to speaker course because they have great podcasts i do listen to a couple podcasts on their uh host system i listen to iheartradio.com primarily to listen to the uh rebroadcast i guess the 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 lack of a better term the the famous broadcast of the legendary casey Kasem and american top 40 original american top 40 they have the, all of those so i listen to them for tune in and listen to a lot of my old rate old time radio shows i'm a big fan of old time radio from the 30s and 40s and also i that's my cue to listen to a lot of sporting events believe it or not because a lot of sporting events are there for free including maryland basketball and football georgetown basketball and howard university football so i listen to that on tune in and Stitcher, I get all my news from Stitcher. Stitcher has a great collection of news and a lot of other things. Now, as far as Stitcher is concerned, we do have a special offer for for you who listen to us on Stitcher. Now, if you listen to us on Stitcher, you may not be on their premium site, which gives you a lot more content, more original contract content, especially uh, uh, Devoted by Stitcher, made by Stitcher, say. You have bonus episodes of events, of uh, podcasts. You can get great comedy albums and a whole lot more. Now, you can do it through Boxing Along the Beltway. Now, Stitcher Premium is just $4.99 a month, $4.99 a month, or $34.99 for a full year. But if you use my promo code, which is BOXING, promo code BOXING, you will get one month of Stitcher Premium for free. So once again... Uh, it's four ninety nine a month and thirty four ninety nine for a full year. But if you use the, my promo code boxing, you will get one month of Stitcher Premium for free. So if you listen to us on Stitcher dot com, we thank you very much. If you listen to us on all the other podcast networks, podcast hubs, I should say. We thank you as well. But for Stitcher listeners, you can get you can upgrade to Stitcher Premium by going to the promo using the promo code for one month for free. You use the promo code BOXING. That's BOXING is the promo code. So make sure you do that. So thank you very much for joining us. And and again, we are very, very loaded today. And we start today with breaking news out of Ekant... Let me, let me make sure I got, got the name right here. Ekaterinburg, Russia. I'm close to it, I guess. This is the 2019 Elite Men's World Championships. And that's where we find... 
Keyshawn Davis out of Alexander, Virginia, by way of Norfolk, Virginia. And he is going and doing incredibly well at those world championships at Ekaterinburg, Russia. That's what it is. And he has moved into the semifinals today as we record this. He's moved into the semifinals. He won a 5-0 decision today over Sofiane Omiha of France. Now, this was a huge victory for Davis because Omiha was the 2017 world champion and he won a silver medal at the 2016 Olympics in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. So the win was a 5 nothing victory and he's had 5 nothing victories in all three of his bouts to this point. Okay? He's had three straight shutout victories and the win guarantees at least a bronze medal for Davis, which is a huge accomplishment in a very short time for Keyshawn Davis. This is his first world championship appearance, by the way. Now, as we record this, coming up uh, later on this week, actually uh, record this tomorrow, Thursday, he'll be in the semifinals. Davis will be in the semifinals. He'll take on Hovhannis Bakov of Armenia. Now, Bakov won a bronze medal at the 2017 World Championships. He's a two-time European champion. So, if he can get past this guy, oh goodness. I mean, you're looking at a definite uh, candidate for the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, Keyshawn Davis has done tremendously on the worldwide level over the last couple of years. And uh, right now he's in the semifinals of the Elite Men's World Championship. So follow us on the blog, boxonboy.blogspot.com for the rest of the week. And we'll give you updates on how Keyshawn Davis continues to fare in the Elite Men's World Championships in Russia this week. So congratulations already, Keyshawn Davis. Now let's talk about the recaps on a couple of great events that took place this past Saturday, uh, September 14th. Um, we had two big wins on the road, and of course we had a card at the Michael Sun Sportsplex in Sterling, Virginia this past weekend as well that I was unable to get to, so I'm going to give you a whole recap as best I can on that card. But let's start with our bout in the Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson, California. And that's where Baltimore, Maryland's WBC Super Middleweight Champion, the heavy hitting diva Franchon Cruz Desern, won a 10 round unanimous decision over a late substitute, Marcella La Diva Cornejo, in a rematch. And not only did she retain her WBC Super Featherweight Championship, she also won the vacant WBO Super, Fe- Super uh, Middleweight title. I have Featherweight. It should be Middleweight title. Um, and just an incredible situation with this one. It, this one was really weird because apparently the Cruz de Zern's original opponent, who was uh, Alejandra Jimenez, who is the WBC Heavyweight Championship champion, Championship title holder, I should say. Uh, apparently, she had trouble with her visa, and that's why she could not make this bout. And just on two days' notice, they inserted Marcela Conejo, who who lost to um, Cruz Desern almost one year ago to the day when Cruz Desern won a 10-round majority decision to win a WBC title. In this bout, a little different and a little better performance, even better performance for Cruz Desern. According to FightNews.com's Miguel Maravilla and Rocky Morales, Cruz Zern beat Conejo to the punch throughout the bout, landed the harder and heavier shots. And just really, I mean, just, just beat her to the punch throughout the whole, whole bout. The bout was uh, carried on the zone, by the way. And uh, judges Carla Caiz and Pat Russell scored about 98-92. Daniel Sandoval scored about 97-93. So a great performance for Franchon Cruz Zern. And she raised the record to 6-1, 2 KOs. Marcela Conejo falls to 13-4, 5 KOs. And now Cruz deserves a two-belt super middleweight champion and uh, just doing great things in the world of, of uh, female boxing. Congratulations to her as well. Meanwhile, at the Wind Creek Event Center in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Michael the Professor Fox, the Welterweight or super, uh, super super lightweight, I should say, out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland. He put on a dominating performance and route to a 10-round unanimous decision over UD AK-47 Bernardo of Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. Now, my other FightNews.com uh, colleague, Kurt Wolfheimer, said that Fox 
uh, took over in the second round. He loaded various combinations that forced Bernardo on the defensive. Fox, who, again, I think is the most technically sound boxer in the beltway right now, he continued to rack up the points and he stepped in and out of the pocket, four and five punch combinations throughout rounds three and seven through seven, Wolfheimer said. Uh, Fox's movement and superior boxing ability completely disarmed him, Tom Bernardo, <clears throat> excuse me, and he can only land single shots on occasion. Fox wobbled Bernardo in the eighth round with a straight light ref com- light, left-right combination up the middle, but, he, but Bernardo covered it and survived. And the boxing lesson continued throughout the two final two rounds. Fox kept Bernardo at bay, circled around the ring with snapping shots. All three judges. Let me say this again. All three judges scored about a shutout for Fox, 100 to 90. So Michael Fox was ranked 15th in the world by the WBA. He's now 21 and 1, 5 KOs. Bernardo drops to 25 and 5, 18 KOs. I tell you, the last two uh, wins for Fox. Michael Fox have been just great wins. Of course, he defeated Fasliti in uh, Gabnazarov earlier this year. And now he has this big win over uh, Udi Bernardo, who's a tough veteran. And uh, he's in good shape. He's Again, he's ranked in the top 15 now. So, you know, he, he's looking at the – he's ranked number 15 in welterweight. But I think he, he's going back and forth between welterweight and junior welterweight. And uh, he's just doing well throughout his – his career thus far. Once again, 21 and 1, 5 KOs. So, congratulations once again to Michael, the Professor Fox. And by the way, Elantes Fox, as we said uh, last week, ranked third in the world in one, uh, one uh, ranking and uh, 13th in the world in another. So, he's, he's a world ranked boxer himself. Now, let's talk about the card that took place, the Sign Nation Sports card that took place at the Michael and Son Sportsplex in Sterling, Virginia. This is a card that I could not attend because I had another engagement, had to work another event. And so I was I was upset to miss the finale of Tori Shonuff Nelson. We talked about how great she's been uh, throughout her career. And she ended her career in a dominant fashion. And she scored a first round TKO over Latasha Burton of Huma, Louisiana uh, on the Signation Sports card. Nelson won the bout at one minute of the first round. I had a chance to look at it a little bit after I, I wrote my piece for Boxing Along the Beltway, the blog. And she looked dominant. She was really dominant. Uh, Burton didn't have a clue throughout that bout. So, big win for uh, Tori Nelson. Final record, 22 and 3. 20 wins, 2 losses, 3 draws, 4 KOs, 11 world titles, and 4 weight divisions. And he, she was selected Beltway Boxer of the Year twice in her career. Burton falls to 4 and 13. She was knocked out for the 7th straight time. So, once again been a pleasure i have to say it's been a complete pleasure to follow the career of tori showed up nelson another box i was able to follow from the amateurs and again she was <clears throat> really doing amateur boxing just to stay in shape but tried to have a a career that's more than likely going to put her in the, in the dc boxing hall of fame i can't see how she's not in the dc boxing hall of fame after this just tremendous because uh, she fought some times in dc fought all over, all over the beltway she did and uh, just a great uh, performance for Tori Shonoff Nelson, a great career. Congratulations to her. Another feature bout, Arlington, Virginia super middleweight, Philip Stankovic, registered first round TKO over George Shepard of Richmond, Virginia. Stankovic won about a 254, the first, raised his record down to 6 and 1, 3 KOs. Shepard falls to 1, 10 and 1. Most of the bouts on this card were knockouts. The only bout that went the distance involved Salisbury, Maryland, welterweight, nasty Nigel Fennell. He won a six-round unanimous decision over Darrell Harris of Sarasota, Florida. We didn't get any scores for that particular bout, but uh, Fennell is went the distance for a very first time for the very first time in his career. He's now five and zero, four KOs. Harris falls to two, fifteen and one with one KO. Washington D.C. featherweight Darren Sweet Tay Williams he bounced back from his last loss in March. Uh, he scored a second-round TKO over Raymond Bad Boy Chacon of Los Angeles, California. Bout was stopped at 259 of the second round. Williams is 8 and 1, 5 KO. Chacon drops to 740 and 1. Also bouncing back from a loss is Mac Pappy Allison, the, third, the fourth out of Baltimore, Maryland. He's a lightweight and he scored a third round knockout over Veron Webb of North Carolina. Bout in the 250 of the third round. Allison 10, 3 and 1, 8 KOs. Webb is 0 and 4. 
Other bouts on the card, Newport, New Virginia heavyweight Jerry Slug Force. He scored a second round knockout over Martez Williamson of Akron, Ohio. Forrest stopped Williamson at seven seconds of the second round. Forrest is 26 and 3, 20 KOs. Williamson falls at 326 and 1. Number of debuting boxes on this card. Uh, debuting Le- Leesburg, Virginia Cruiserweight, Calvin Menz, a native of uh, Accra, Ghana. He scored a second round TKO over equally debu- debuting Rashad Lipscomb of Danville, Virginia. The bout ended at 159 the second. Another debuting uh, boxer, welterweight Allen Johnson of Ashburn, Virginia. He registered a first round TKO over Rondell McGee of Yonkers, New York. McGee is 0 2. That bout ended at 157 of the first round. And the opening bout of the card, Salim Kelly, who's a debuting welterweight from Cliffwood, New Jersey. He won a third round TKO over equally debuting. DeAndre Anderson of Birmingham, Alabama. The bout was stopped at the three-minute mark. So that is the card for uh, Sanation Sports Promotions. I heard they had a very good crowd on hand, which is very good to hear. And uh, thank my buddy uh, Henry Discombobbing Jones for doing the ring announcing. Uh, I, I think I was supposed to be the ring announcer for that card, but I could not make it. So um, so my thanks to Discombobbing Jones for doing that, as always. Brian Dillon doing a great job as well. And Sanation Sports has some good good cards, no question about it. A good exciting cards and again, a lot of knockouts on this particular card. So now we can turn to some of the events that will take place coming up this weekend, September 20th and the 21st. And we're going to jump around a little bit because we talked about a couple of things last week. And that's, uh, of course, the card that will take place in Las Vegas at the Canary Casino and Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. On Friday, September 20th, we talked about this last week. That's what Malik Iceman Hawkins, the newest member of the Mayweather Promotions uh, family, he's involved in an eight-round uh, bout, a ten-round bout, excuse me, ten-round bout against Al the Machine Gun Rivera of Santa Rosa City, Laguna, Philippines. Hawkins 16 and 09 KOs, Rivera 20 and 3, 18 KOs. So uh, we talked about that a little bit last week. Also, the heavy the main event will be heavy light heavyweight Scott Cujo Sigmund of Bedford, Virginia. He'll take on Lionel Lonnie B. Thompson of Las Vegas by way of Buffalo, New York. Sigmund 34, 13 and 1, 17 KOs. And Thompson 20 and 5, 11 KOs. So uh, that those bouts will take place on Friday, September 20th at the Cannery Casino Hotel in Las Vegas. But that's not all on this weekend because we have a lot of things going on this weekend. First of all, talk about Friday, September 20th at the Paramount Theater in Huntington, New York. And that's where... Upper Marlboro, Maryland cruiserweight Charles Johnson, he will battle the debuting Emmanuel Etienne of Uniondale, New York. Uh, Charles Johnson is one in three with one KO. <clears throat> Excuse me. He lost a four round majority decision in his last outing against Jacob Sarico. That was on April 27th at the Pensbury Racket Club in Mooresville, Pennsylvania. Meanwhile, Etienne again, as we said, is a pro debut, so we'll see what happens with this one. As Emmanuel Etienne takes on Charles Johnson. I'm not sure. Uh, Charles Johnson is a cruiser, and they have Etienne listed as light heavy. So I, I think it is at a cruiser, so we'll see what happens there. Also, on Friday, September 20th, this bout just added to the to the schedule here. Um, Yank Plana, the sexy Albanian out of Hagerstown, Maryland, by way of Albania. He'll be in a six-round bout against uh, Jamal the Truth Davis out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now, uh, Yank Plata went up to the eight rounders for the first time in his last outing, lost an eight round majority decision to Rafael Ibokwe. That was on August 23rd at the Arabia Shine Shrine Center in Houston, Texas. Uh, so he's going back to six rounds for this one against Jamal Truth Davis, a tough veteran, but uh, his record uh, 18 and 15 with one draw and seven KOs. He's coming off a uh, eight round unanimous season loss that took place at the MGM National Harbor in Oxon Hill, Maryland. He lost to Tyler Howard by a eight round unanimous decision that was on July 19th. So uh, we'll see what happens here. Uh, his bout prior to that was against Tyrone uh, Brunson. That was on March in March of 2019, March 1st. He lost by ninth round TKO, but I heard that was a great bout. No question about that at the 2300 Arena. So, uh, Yank Plana taking on Jamal Davis, six-round bout at the Parks Casino in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Uh, not to be confused with the Wind Creek Resort uh, that that was that where uh, that where uh, Michael Fox fought recently uh, this past week. But uh, this will be at the Parks Casino in 
Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, Yank Plana, Sexy Albanian taking on Jamal the Truth Davis. Now on September 21st, the world switches to the husband of Franchon Cruz Desern. That's that's uh, Glenn Desern. And Glenn Desern will be, for some reason, I don't know why this is the case, but he'll be in a four-round bout coming up on September 21st in Covington, Kentucky. And no word yet on his opponent, but he's coming off. He, he hasn't fought since May 11, 2018 at the 2300 Arena in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And that's where he lost an eight-round TKO over Joshua Greer Jr. And that was about, I believe that was on uh, Showtime. And uh, Joshua don't blink Greer, that's who that was. That was 2300 Arena in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Desern is 9-2 and two with one draw and six KOs. And uh, he's looking for his first win since he won... Uh, about against uh, Leroy Davila back in April of 2017. That was the beltweight boxing battle of the year that year against Leroy Davila. Uh, Zern won an eight-round unanimous decision. Since then, he had the draw against Adam Lopez in July of 2017, then the loss to Jesse Angel Hernandez in uh, in November of 2017, and then the loss to uh, Joshua Greer on uh, in May of 2018. So he's looking for a win on this one. He could use one, no question about that. So Glenn Desern looking about, and Franchon Cruz Desern, is her, his wife will be supporting him coming up uh, this four-round bout for some reason. I guess it's a step back just to see where he is uh, since he hasn't fought since May of last year. Um, in Covington, Kentucky, no word yet on his opponent. Also coming up on September 21st, the undefeated Russell Brothers, Antoine and Antonio of Capitol Heights, Maryland. They'll be on at bouts in bouts at the Rainbow Bank Theater in Bakersfield, California. And I believe these bouts may be televised, at least one of these bouts may be televised on Fox Sports 1, FS1, they call himself now. Antonio, another Russell, he's the bantamweight. He'll be in a 10-round bout against former world title contender David Severo Carmona of Mexico City, Mexico. Russell is 15-0, 11 KOs. He'll have a 10-round unanimous decision win over Francisco Pedrosa, that was on July 13th in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the Minneapolis Armory. Uh, this will be interesting because, again, Carmona uh, has been in the world championship picture over his career. But Carmona has not fought since May of 2018 when he lost contest for the WBA Super Flyweight Championship by seventh round stoppage in Fresno, California. Now, Carmona could not have won that title anyway because he was overweight. He missed weight going into that bout. But Carmona has also had bids for the B.O. Super Flyweight title. So he has uh, been around the world title pitcher for a number of years. Uh, we don't know how, how how fresh he is since he has not fought since May of 2018. But uh, we shall see. So Russell, a uh, 10-round bout against uh, Carmona. So best wish to Antonio another Russell. Also, Super Lightweight Antoine, the last Russell. He'll compete in an eight-round contest against Sebastian Diaz Maldonado of Agos Calientes, Mexico. Russell kept his perfect record, which is 10-0, 10 KOs, intact with a third-round TKO over Larry Ventus on that same July 13th card in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, again, I thought this was a step backwards for Antoine in this case. I uh, really, really didn't think he needed to fight somebody, Larry Ventus, who had a had a uh, under well on the 500 record. This time, Maldonado, however, is 16-4-1, 12 KOs. He travels to the United States for the first time, but he returns to action for the first time since April of 2018. He stopped the debuting Daniel Pineda in his hometown of Agos Calientes. So uh, that would be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, yeah, Antoine Russell uh, fighting very, very well throughout his career. Of course, he has that perfect record. And we interesting to see what he does against a guy, again, who has not fought in more than a year. And we interesting to see what he does there. So that is going to be... Uh, Saturday, September 21st at the Rainbow Bank Theater, Bakersfield, California. At least, I would guess at least one of the bouts will be on FS1. I don't know if both of them will be there. We'll see. Uh, Antoine Russell, again, he's 10 and 0, 10 KOs. But they're both fighting guys that have decent records. And in and, and Antonio's case, uh, Carmona is a former world champ, world title holder, world title contender, I should say. So we'll see if he can do that. So the, that's going to be great. So, again, a busy, busy weekend this weekend. Um, not so much in the Beltway, but outside the Beltway, a lot of things going on. So make sure you stay with us. Uh, stay with the uh, Boxing on the Beltway blog at boxingonthebeltway.blogspot.com. Make sure you stay with us for all the recaps here on the Boxing on the Beltway podcast network. 
and our news and notes on the Box on Beltway Podcast Network. Once again, brought to you by Real Time Pain Relief. You go to freepainoffer.com, buy $10 worth of Real Time Pain Relief. You get a free $10 tube of Real Time Pain Relief. Rub it on, the pain is gone in real time. And by DebraSpears.com. She has great weight loss tips, great jewelry, great training methods as well on Debra. That's D E B R A Spears. Dot com. And don't forget to go on the Amazon uh, uh, page on box on about eight blog spot dot com and you can uh, buy your gifts from am- Amazon dot com right on the blog there. And once again, that Stitcher offer is still available for you. If you want to upgrade to Stitcher Premium, you can do that with our code word boxing. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Gary Digital Williams. Mind you, as always, keep supporting the best boxing in the world, the boxing along the beltway. Thanks for listening, everybody. Take care.